Dan Knowlton of Knowlton Video and Social Media Marketing Agency in the UK. Welcome to Brand Growth Heroes. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's brilliant to have you on. So listen, I don't generally have marketing agencies on the show because I don't want to do any selling. So I'm really having you on as Dan, one one half of Dan and Lloyd of Knowlton Marketing because, or of Knowlton, because you've really inspired me with the content that you are um, putting up on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Uh, And I, I wanted to talk to you as kind of an expert that's growing a marketing agency, kind of not in food and beverage at all, really at the moment, a little bit, but but not massively. That's not where you get most of your, your revenue from. But you really come across as someone who has totally cracked this whole advertainment model. And I wanted you to share, you know, any kind of tips and learnings with um with with our audience. Sure. So thanks for the intro. That was a nice intro. Um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 tons I can share with you on this episode. Um, I guess the, the, the first thing to clear up is what is advertainment because it's it is a buzzword. It just sounds like a uh, you know marketers love to make things sound cool when it's just pretty simple. So advertainment is all about entertaining advertising or entertaining marketing and trying to produce content and campaigns that people actually enjoy consuming. And we've we've had a lot of success with that with the brands we've been working with. So yeah, we can dive into just some of the details would, around that today. That would be fab. Let's start at the beginning. So uh, I came across you guys when you put up uh, a video of you and Lloyd talk, dressed up as different LinkedIn personas, right? And it made me laugh so much. Will you talk a little bit about that video so that everyone can imagine and then go and have a look at it? And because it just made me laugh so much. And I thought, how have these guys engaged me in this way. And that's when I started looking at the rest of your content. And and that was engaging me too. And I was like, these guys really understand how to engage me. Tell us a little bit about that video and how it came, how it came about. That specific video is a video where we are um, showing different types of characters that you see on LinkedIn. Um, there's like the chat GPT expert uh, <laughs> and various other characters that uh, we, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and we were kind of sort of poking fun at the different types and ourselves really like, you know, yeah. uh, the different types of people that you see on LinkedIn. Um, and I, I love the one, I love the character who keeps going into your inbox saying, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I noticed that you haven't replied to my previous email. What's that yes. person's name? Do you remember? Uh, I can't remember exactly what yeah. that one was, but it's, I think that's another thing, um, again, on LinkedIn that kind of is frustrating people sort of sending cold sales messages and things. But I, I guess the important thing to know is the, the, the strategy behind that video yeah. is, um, and we were speaking about this just before we, we kind of, uh, started the podcast is, um, it's not just about making funny, relatable videos because there's lots of creators out there that can do that, which is great. But from a business perspective, the the strategy behind it is creating content that's relatable to, and and entertaining to your ideal target market. But then once you've had that first, uh, you've made them feel something positive about your brand. That first touch point of oh, like like you were just explaining, like you saw it and you're like oh, I like this. This is cool. Then it's about thinking how do you cleverly tie in strategic sales focused messaging. So for example, in um in that video that you mentioned, one of the characters was me as myself um, talking about our agency and like, oh, well, I'm going to play LinkedIn as this character because the whole theme of the video is, is if you're playing like a video game. Um, and and that, that was the kind of how we cleverly tied in strategic sales messaging within the video. Okay. 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 So to talk to us a little bit about, about how you started the agency and how you came to the place where you realized that advertainment really is the way to engage hearts and minds and actually then the rational of going ahead and, and purchasing from from a company. So we accidentally discovered it. Firstly, it was an accident. I don't want to sit here saying we had some big plan. Um, we basically started our our video and social media marketing agency from our parents' spare room, okay. like most agencies. Um, we spent the first three years really trying to figure out what our unique value proposition was to the world. We created websites, we created content, we did training, we ran ads. Like we we tried and tested everything, um, and had a like. I guess it, our growth is pretty stagnant across those three years, but we were just learning a lot. We were like sponges learning all these different types of marketing. And then in 2017, we had this idea. We wanted to create, um, we, we would got some small clients under about like small local hotels and restaurants and that kind of thing. We support them with their marketing. And then we wanted to create a testimonials video where we showed our customers saying how brilliant we were. And we thought this is going to be our, you know, this is how we're going to get bigger, better customers by showing all of our customers saying nice things about us. However, 
we knew that testimonials videos are boring. Like who wants to watch a video of someone saying, yeah, Dan and Lloyd and Knowlton are brilliant. Like no one's going to watch that. So we came up with a really weird idea. And the weird idea was that we would firstly go out and shoot actual interviews with our customers. So to get those like that credibility, social proof of our customers saying nice things. However, we also thought, how can we keep people engaged in that video? So we dressed up as different characters with wigs on and, and we pretended to be our own customers talking about how brilliant it is to work <laughs> with Dan and Lloyd. And we had like weird characters. There was like a dolphin trainer, a butcher. Um, and they're like, they, they, we looked really odd and we had a witty script that was like fun and entertaining and stuff. Then we cut the real interviews in between the fake interviews. So it was a video where, yeah, you know, it's real interviews and fake interviews. We posted it on Facebook at the time and um, didn't think much of it. And like within a few hours, there was tons of people commenting on it saying that they loved it. And we were like, what? People are loving this, this video, this testimonials video. And we, it generated the most amount of new business for our agency over anything we'd ever tried in those previous three years. Okay. And, and that was like a light bulb moment for us. Like, you can create highly strategic sales focused content. You know, it's a testimonials video selling our services, but deliver it in a really relatable, creative, and entertaining way that people love. And that was when we discovered advertainment. Um, and since then, we've, we we then started to apply that with other brands. Our first uh, company we worked with to apply that approach was like a small gym. We created like gym bro culture videos that helped sell their gym. Worked incredibly well. And we've since gone on to now work with some of the, the world's leading brands to apply that approach to marketing. But that's, that's the kind of backstory, how we accidentally discovered it. So how do you work out how to engage? What is going to engage the, the target customer of your client? Good question. The, really, the first thing is understanding who is the target. Like this is marketing 101. But I think everyone knows this. You know, You need to understand who are you trying to sell something to so that you can sell them that thing mm-hmm. and relate to them. But... A lot of marketers go surface level. You know, I'm targeting 40 year old Susan who's got two kids from London who, who you know, earns this much yeah. money. Like that surface level stuff. And she what cares you... about quality and taste. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to show loads of p- pack shots. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, exactly right. But what you, they don't do is go that, to that deeper level of like, what is Susan who's 40 talking about with her friends when she picks the kids up from school? Or what is Dave who's 50? who's a builder sharing in his WhatsApp group, what kind of videos he's sharing that he's seeing online or what kind of TV shows are they watching and talking about with their friends? That's the like deeper level of what do they actually care about right now? That that isn't to do with your company. But but how do you then, and I get that and and, and I I get that, but how do you then use that for your brand? I'm thinking of, say you're a snacking cracker, Mm -hmm. a snacking Mm -hmm. cracker brand, right? Mm-hmm. How how do you then use that in a way that isn't totally separate to your snack and cracker brand? Like I'll no, tell you, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. So the reason you fit so well in term, in in my last three episodes, right, is because yeah. I had, as we talked about um, earlier on, I had midday squares on, and Jake Carl says, if anyone wants to listen to that episode uh, three episodes ago, Jake Carl, the founder of Midday Squares, says that his platform for engaging, um, their platform for engaging their target consumer is a mix between uh, Shark Tank, which is you know, Dragon's Den in, in Canada and the US, the Kardashians with Elon Musk. Yeah. And that's how they go about engaging. And, and but, but so they don't talk about their product at all. It's about their business, how they're scaling the business of that product. Mm-hmm. It could be any product, it just ha- so happens to be Midday Square. So they're not selling Midday Squares. And then you've got Perfect Head after that, or the next video or the next uh, episode we did. And they've uh, borrowed from that. They've been inspired by Jake Carls and they, they're they doing that kind of whole, you know, we're building our business and where are we going wrong and what are our wins and all the rest of it. And I get but not everybody, not every food or beverage or CPG brand can do that whole, this is how we're building our business. How do you like link into what Susan's saying to her best mate over a glass of wine mm-hmm. and it still be related to the product you're selling? So I'll give you an exact example of a client case study where this is one of uh, the ones I love that we've done. Okay. So um, we work with a brand called Cameo Apples, which is a UK based brand of Apple. Um, they came to us about five years ago with the objective of getting stocked in a top five UK supermarket. And the approach was currently they had zero online presence. No one gives a crap about their brand or is talking about it or is excited about it. Or even knows it, right? Or even knows it. And they were actually 
they were selling through supermarkets, but then they weren't a branded cameo apple. It was a generic like sweet crisp apple that like Tesco's and Asda and stuff were selling. But they they wanted they wanted to build a case study to go to the supermarkets and say, look, look, it's supermarkets, look how everyone excited about the cameo brand. We want to get our branding on the packaging. So that was the objective five years ago. We came up with this really innovative approach to create millions of, of views and engagement online with their campaign. The way we did it, which is going to answer your question, is we tied in content with pop culture TV shows and movies that we knew their customers love. So for example, we did, um, do, do you, have you seen Game of Thrones? Yeah. So when Game of Thrones season eight came out, we did a, we did a number of videos. One of them was like a parody video where we had a guy on a horse in a suit of armor, full suit of armor, um, riding through the woods. And it, there was like a really uh, witty voiceover over it, talking about how this is the number one Game of Thrones fan in the world. And this was when everyone was talking about Game of Thrones. We knew their target okay. market was talking about Game of Thrones. And it just happened to be a Cameo Apple's employee. And it was like very comedic because it, he was talking in a serious voiceover like yeah i go into work and i wear my suit of armor it's a bit clanky when i go into the office but and it was like really sort of witty and fun so that's one example okay. another thing we did was um do you like david attenborough love david attenborough who yeah. doesn't like david yeah, attenborough no. i mean i, I mean, don't I, I don't trust you if you don't like him no totally i mean they just gotta be other than my 13 year old daughter who thinks he's boring um, i know isn't that awful but anyway let's keep yeah. going keep going so i do so, love david attenborough yeah so another example, um, so he had a series called uh, Our Planet that came out a couple of years ago now. We basically created a, another sort of comedic parody video where we cut clips of from that series in between um, really high production value shots of their apple on, on a beach. And we had a David Attenborough voiceover talking about the apple as if it was a wild animal, as if it was <laughs> part of that series, right? Okay. So here we have a wild apple, like that kind of, I can't do the voice. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. No, that, was, um, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. <laughs> um, and again, the, these are just two examples. Another really, can I just quickly tell you one even Please. weirder thing that we did? Yeah. Um, so do you watch Gogglebox? Yeah, I love Gogglebox. So this is actually quite clever. So we did a load of research using, um, so we did a load of research to understand that um, we knew their target market watched Dancing on Ice. Mm -hmm. Do you know Dancing on Ice? Yeah. Um, Don't watch and, it, but I know it. And so we wanted to think, how can we cleverly talk, like create content about Dancing on Ice that's to do with their apples? Because how yeah. do you tie in the two, like the question you, you asked me? Yeah. So we, we um, Gogglebox, where people comment on a TV show, we created a miniature set that looked like a, a front room. And we had apples sitting on these chairs <laughs> watching, uh, watching Dancing on Ice, right? Yeah. The clever bit here is... Each week, we'd look at Twitter to see what the trending opinions were on the episode. So, for example, okay. this is when Gemma Collins from TOWIE, or The Only Way is Essex, was on there. Everyone was talking about her and, and stuff. So, we would look at what the trending opinions were. Then we would create content where the apples were, were, were saying the opinions that we knew people already had because we'd done the research okay. on Twitter about the Dancing on Ice show. Okay. Um, and again, millions of views online because we would then target people who we knew were their target market, who were interested in the show with that content, who we knew had the opinions that we were sharing in the video. So we knew, of course, they're going to say, I totally agree with this. And some people and were like, it. I totally disagree with you and, sh and share it. So, but, so, we, but yeah. does all of this cost a fortune? I mean, the, you know, like mini sets and production, like, you know, I imagine that company was a very small, well, maybe they were very big in like own label apples, but probably low margin, didn't understand huge a lot about marketing. And probably as a result, aren't going to spend tens of thousands on an agency, right? Mm. So, so I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, my listeners listening to this go, oh, I could never afford that kind of stuff. So to be completely transparent with you, that this example I'm talking with is probably one of our, not lower value, ret like retainers, but like they're, they're spending under, you know, five to 10 grand a month all in okay. with content okay. production and ads. And, and also okay. like, it's, it's more about like, Oh no, that's that's you know that people I think that costs loads of money. But what has this achieved? So yes, right. it's achieved millions of views online, millions of people engaging with their content. It's also helped them get stocked in Lidl as a branded cameo apple, like okay. huge win. So yeah. so you know the number one objective we've helped them achieve that because they they took this case study to to the audience. We've also more recently every year we we um you know we're working together five or six years now. Every year we try and innovate what we're doing. This okay. year we've gone all in on TikTok. Okay, because we realized it was getting more expensive to advertise on Facebook and Instagram. We're all in on TikTok. We started their account first of January. 
now um, where we are now generated almost 10 million views on TikTok, uh, over 10,000 followers on TikTok, reaching huge audiences online. And if, yeah. again, if you want to have a look at some examples of this, go to Cami Apples. This is a completely different strategy to what I've just mentioned. Right. Here we're tapping into trending sounds, trending music um, in a really creative, engaging way. And again, like getting millions of views online. So having an, an agency partner that you start off with, that grows with you, that you trust yeah. is really, really important. I know that in m- my listeners have difficulty finding an agency partner like that, that that delivers results. I mean, yes, there are lots that do, but uh, you know, if you're using a contractor or whatever at the very beginning, because you don't have the the cash flow yeah. or you don't have the guts or the conviction mm-hmm. to say, no, I've got to put eight grand or 10 grand against mm-hmm. this a month. Um, then you're spending a lot less and you're not seeing the results, the returns, you kind of move away from it and you say, oh, it doesn't really work. Social media doesn't work for us. Yeah. Um, you know, video content uh, creation doesn't really work for us. I have, I've, I've had clients on the Great Strategy Programme say that to me and I'm saying, but, you know, or D2C doesn't work for us. Direct to mm. consumer doesn't work for us. I was like, You're a premium chocolate brand for people with allergies. You are the absolute perfect D2C brand because you can target somebody with very specific pain points. So if it hasn't worked for you up to now, it's that you haven't been creating the right content, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can totally relate to that. I think it is, a, it is challenging for these kind of brands to take the leap and trust, I guess, Maybe to try and give a few pieces of advice to those Please. people, like the the brands that are thinking, this sounds great, but how do I find a company to work with? Um, you know, there's lots of great ones out there. So I, I do a couple of things. One, the number one thing is looking at case studies and evidence and data that shows that whoever you're speaking to has delivered results for someone in your industry or similar kinds of brands. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a really important one. Also, like something that uh, that we do is with people who some people come to us and they're like completely convinced we want to go all in with this. Like we're we're currently working with a big drinks brand that's investing a huge amount with us, and they were just all in. Like love what you do. We just need to, and we're doing a really creative campaign with them. Some are like, I don't know. Like it's what I'd say is try to figure out like whatever the smallest test campaign you can do is to to see a level of yeah. success rather than going all in just and and you know you might not get huge wins but even if you can track that data and see that there's a level of success um there before going all in do that as well but um, i think that's it is it's the discipline of setting up the the what the, the the clear objective is right and what the metrics are and then the discipline of actually tracking them at the end because if you as a business don't have that in place or if your contractor yeah. is just Burning delivering money. something you, yeah and so you could have the best creative and you might not necessarily know you know which version of it's working because you haven't got the system in place to to track it i've got two questions <clears throat> that are burning um for me the first is it I imagine it can't always be about parody and comedy because then we'd have every brand in the world doing parody and comedy. So exactly. what else can you do? What else can a brand do other than Good parody question. or comedy? Cool. So that that's uh, something we've been known for is advertising, but we do a lot of other things compared to that. So this is to your point. The, the main thing that anyone thinking like, I've got a more serious brand, we can't do funny content, you know, won't be on brand. The main thing to understand is you need to trigger some kind of emotion with your content. It doesn't have to be, you know, people being laughing and feeling great and happy. It could be more, um, it could be a more negative emotion. Like I'll, I'll give you a specific example. We worked, this is a way more boring one, but it's useful. We worked Hopefully that a- client isn't listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they know that they, you know, we, we're, we're very, we get on very well. <clears throat> they are a company that sells safety gloves, which Woo-hoo! aren't the se- sexiest of products, but it they're depends. safety <laughs> the safety gloves for the workplace that um, helps prevent accidents happening. There's loads of st- statistics and data around that. We helped them through a LinkedIn B2B ad campaign generate a million pound contract. And the way we did it wasn't through creating, you know, you can't really laugh about people having accidents and work and potentially dying. Like it's not no. a subject that you, you know, create parody videos about. We went down a more emotive route of really communicating data around accidents in the workplace and how, and then pro- pro- providing their solution to show how this prevents those accidents. Um, there was another really interesting ad. I remember seeing an ad for St. John's Ambulance years ago, uh, and it was around um, to do with children's safety and stuff. And it was like, it really impacted me. There was, it, there was like a woman in the kitchen and then it cuts to like her child falling at a tree and falling on the floor and stuff. And like, I know it just sounds terrible. And we all but remember those ads. Yeah. From yeah. childhood, those ones and that you like, still remember like, today. Yeah. Like we've both got kids, like you see that and it like makes yeah. you think 
And that 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 negative emotion of like I will will we'll make you take action. And I, I'm not saying like brands should be negative about everything and make everyone feel rubbish. But, but it's, it's about triggering the power of the emotion. The power of the emotion is triggering those emotions enough to make them feel something. Okay, making them feel something will make them take action. Um, and this is why like so many brands get it wrong because they sell a packaged product and they think. I want to sell more of my packaged product. What shall I create content around? Let's create nice, pretty videos and visuals of my packaged product. Now, I understand there's a place for that in your content strategy, but that's not the starting point. The starting point, as I mentioned, is who are you trying to sell stuff to? What do they care about? What, what, what things are going to interest them or trigger their emotions? And then create content around that. And there's all different types of emotions you can trigger. You know, It's not just about making people laugh and feel good or making them feel sort of impacted in a negative way. You know, You can do a whole range of things. Okay. Uh, my second question, thank you so much for that. That's, re that's really useful. My second question is TikTok. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff in the papers at the moment that, you know, um, the United States has just uh, banned TikTok from all government phones and that potentially they will ban it from everybody's phone in the States. Well, that's one person's opinion um, or um, conjecture. Where do you sit as an agency on TikTok and that risk uh, in the future? I think there is potential risk there. I guess I see. The upside right now is, um, so take TikTok out of the equation. Right now, anyone who's producing video content as their marketing strategy should be focused on producing short form vertical video. Okay. Right. If you think, and, and, and like you may ask why. The reason why is because social media platforms leave clues. When all the social media, almost all the social media platforms are optimizing their platforms for short form vertical video after seeing the rise of Snapchat oh, originally, then TikTok, Insta mm -hmm. Reels, you like, if you think of um, TikTok, Insta Reels, Facebook Reels, um, these are the uh, YouTube Shorts. These are all the places where you can generate the most organic reach and engagement through your content without having a big following. Okay, so my suggestion would be right now create short form vertical video content um, and distribute it on places like TikTok, but also YouTube Shorts, Reels, because you can repurpose this content in a very efficient way to post it across all these platforms. Mm -hmm. I'd say that the upside right now is, is to continue to build on those platforms. You can create huge organic reach and engagement on those platforms. So yes, it could get banned in the future. I don't think that's close at all in the UK, but it could. Mm -hmm. But I, rather than thinking, should I be on TikTok or not? I would say I would be focusing on creating short form vertical video and distributing it on in all those places okay. and growing an audience in all those places. Okay, brilliant. So that's a totally different lens. Thank, thank you so much yeah. for that. So this is brilliant, Don. I'm, I'm learning so much and I'm sure uh, the, our listeners are too. But when you've got this great content, where does it sit in the funnel of basically bringing people down to actually buying product, whether that's on your Shopify web store or whether it's, you know, wherever it is, Amazon or anywhere else or Good in question. real life? Because I think, I think what, what's important to know is like, just creating these fun, entertaining videos and stuff that, that may generate millions of views isn't good enough if you want to sell product. Okay. That's a starting point. That yeah. is get, getting people to feel that positive emotion or, or some kind of positive or negative emotion that makes them then want to do something. Mm -hmm. the, really, the, the overarching um, uh, thing that people need to understand is a traditional marketing funnel. Yeah. which is the, 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 the model that represents the journey that so someone goes on from. Yes, feeling that emotion at the start when you build awareness, but from there, you need to build trust and drive action. So how do you build trust and drive action? So let's, let's go down to the next stage of building trust along that customer journey. Someone's discovered you, but now how do you convince them to buy a product and service? It's all about understanding a few things. First of all, what are their key objections? What are their reasons for not wanting to buy your packaged product? Um, is it too expensive? Is it, uh, I don't know, the nutrition information, not what they want? Is it, um, you know, there could be a whole range of objections. How do you find out what those objections are? So by speaking to, if you have a sales team, speaking to your sales team or the people selling your product, mm -hmm. or if you are the person selling it, think about what are all the common objections people have said to you? Like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to buy that because X. Mm -hmm. Think of those things. Once you've got a list of those things, then you need to create content that overcomes those objections. Okay. So, for example, um, uh, they may say that uh, I think your product is too expensive. That's an objection. So, how do you, what content do you create to overcome that objection? Well, you need to create content that that communicates why is it as expensive as it is. What are all the the things that you know? It has better quality ingredients. 
We don't cut corners with things. Like think of what all those qualities are that you can create content around to overcome those objections. There'll be a whole raft of things that you can do here. Yeah, That's one thing, overcoming objections. Another is um, uh, providing data to demonstrate that your product does what it says on the tin, right? So if uh, you have like a weight loss product or sure. whatever, it's like, I'll give you an example, a specific example. We work with Wall, one of the longest running male grooming brands that they sell clippers. So some of their clippers, one of the objections was like, I don't know if I trust the battery life on this. It says it's 180 hours battery life. So we literally created time-lapse content showing us running the clipper for 180 hours. Um, or I don't know if it's waterproof. We show, th we show the clipper dropping it in a oh, glass of water. Um, because, because again, it's like these, these short visual um, pieces of content that are overcoming those objections. And these are all like the touch points that are holding the hand of that ideal customer, taking them through that journey of building awareness. Now you're building that trust. And it could be things like case that's, studies. That's more content. I mean, this, you know, this starts to add up. Say you only have budget to create one lot of content. How do you, how do you, it, you can't incorporate that into the other content because then you're trying to do too much. So how do you, how do you manage that? I think, again, it's, it's, it's different on an individual case by case basis but like you need to work with what you've got if you've got 10 grand you need to figure out it's, it's pointless just investing all of that in this awareness based content we spoke mm -hmm. about at the start where it's like really fun and generating lots of views and engagement that's not good enough i would be thinking how can you split that budget between generating content that builds awareness builds trust and drives action so uh, again you need to think about you may not have a huge budget so what do you need to do? You need to learn yourself then how to create content. Okay. Um, like it's understanding, yeah, that there's loads of free resources online that you can use. and um, But yeah, don't just waste, don't waste all your budget. Don't spend all your budget okay. on that top of funnel activity. Think about how you can create content at each stage of the funnel. So we've talked about creating trust. Let's talk about the action stage then. So it's important to understand where are people taking that final action? So is it the e-commerce website, is it the Shopify store, or Amazon store? Then think about how can you optimize that to, to, to really nudge people to take that final action. So for example, the best example of this is an Amazon product page. If you think of an Amazon product, you know, they've invested millions, tens of millions in optimizing their product pages. When you go to an Amazon product page, um, and when you look at it, you have every piece of information you could ever desire mm -hmm to convince you that that is the best solution to your problem and to overcome your objections. You have um, reviews from other customers. You have questions from other customers about the product. And then people who have bought the product answering like, oh yeah, I bought it. And it does do that thing that you're questioning. Um, you have uh, really high quality videos and images showing the product. You have every piece of um, uh, technical information about the product. So Really try and optimize your kind of product pages to to overcome all those final little objections that people may have oh, before so, taking that. So actually, take your Amazon shop, your Amazon page as the inspiration to have how your product page is on your Shopify site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I, a bit. I can't believe no one's ever said that before. Yeah, well, it's just thinking logically. Like, th th this is the thing with marketing. Everyone tries to overcomplicate it. It's just trying to put your shoes in. You know, we're all consumers. When you are at that final stage of just about to buy something on Amazon or on an e-commerce site, what are all the thoughts going through your head while you're not going to press that final button? Yeah. Another reason it could be it could be uh, the process could be too long-winded. Like you, like the great thing about Amazon is you could do one-click purchasing that reduces all of that. That's if you've amazing. got like ten stages, enter your address, do this, do that, do this. You, you can get to it. Like oh, this sucks. I'm just going to not bother. So yeah. try and reduce all of those friction points and those barriers to making people make that final purchase. Okay. Listen, Dan, this has been absolutely amazing. I'm really conscious of time. Uh, it's coming up to 11. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of that with us today. It's been, it's been really brilliant. Um, <clears throat> and keep, you know, creating all this fab content on LinkedIn. I'm going to follow you on Twitter because I haven't done and uh, I look forward to seeing more of it there. If people want to get in touch, where will they find you? Um, a few places, I guess just search my name on, uh, produce a lot of content on LinkedIn. So Dan Knowlton, but our website is knowltonmarketing.co.uk. Uh, we also got our business anchors podcast, businessanchors.inc is our website. If you want to check Yay. out our podcast there. Okay. Yeah. Which is really funny. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.